What is the craziest thing you've ever believed in? Turn to your neighbor and tell them right now. Go. I remember when I was a kid, I believed in a lot of things. I was filled with faith and a childlike heart. I used to think if I dreamed it, it had to be real. I remember one time I dreamed about a lot of money, and somehow I was able to get all of it. Well, the next time I had that dream, I forced my mind to return me to my house with all of the money so that I wake up with it on my bedside table. It never did work. How crazy is that? How about you? What do you believe in? Do you believe in creepers? Zombies? How about vampires? What about Bigfoot? Or do you believe that your car will start every time? That your cereal really does have 12 essential vitamins and minerals? How about the chair you're sitting in? Will it continue to hold you up? Everyone has faith. Everyone. So what do we do with it? Some of us have grown up hearing the word faith, but do we really know what it means? This week, we're starting a series that we're calling Crux. The word crux is the word for cross in Latin. And in our language today, it's come to mean the most important thing, or the essence of something. Each week in this series, we're looking at various biblical words that will help us understand what's at the heart, the center of what it means to be a Christ follower. The word we're going to look at today is faith. So what is faith? The other day I was having a conversation with someone at a coffee shop, and he asked me what I did for a living. I immediately had that moment of panic for a split second where I just knew that as soon as I said I was planning a church, he'd think I was some crazy madman he'd want to avoid at all costs. But to my surprise, he smiled pleasantly and asked me a question I've heard hundreds of times. What faith are you? And for a lot of us, we would answer, I'm of the Christian faith, or I go to this church or that church down the road. But is that really faith? Is faith just about where you go to church or choosing a religion? For others, faith is the belief that when we, do, when we die, we'll go to heaven. It's fire insurance. Now, is there anything wrong with that? Heck no. I don't want to fry when I die. While heaven is a beautiful place designed by God and should be something to look forward to, it's not what faith is all about. For others, faith is simple trust in God that he'll do what he says. Like, oh yeah, I believe in that. But is that real faith? What if my faith never made it past just where I go to church or simple trust? What if it stayed at just words? So is your faith just words? Or is your faith leading you somewhere? Let me tell you a story. Our story starts with a guy who's thirsty for learning and for life itself. Born a citizen of the Roman Empire, this man named Saul begins to study under the finest and wisest teacher in the assembly. As his study intensifies, he begins to understand the purpose of life, to live and teach this message of morality, codes, and faithfulness. There's nothing that stands in his way of seeing people take this message seriously. His rhythm leads him to worship, learning, and then home. One day a troublemaker, always followed by a crowd and speaking against the empire, dies. And his followers claim he, ri he rose from the dead. Even worse, they begin to teach in his name and gather more followers. One follower of this new way named Stephen is arrested. And the council brings him before the, the court to hear his case. He ends up calling out the whole assembly right there, which starts a riot leading to his death. And this Saul is right there, guarding the coats and clothes of the executioners. These people following the way are not worshiping God like Saul's been taught they should be. He feels personally, personally responsible to crush this little uprising and begins to travel around arresting and even killing some of these people. On one such trip to a neighboring city called Damascus, Saul is traveling with some friends and the blinding light knocks him to the ground. All of a sudden, he hears a voice saying, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Blinded, his friends lead him into the city by the hand and he meets up with a man named Ananias, who shares with him the message of Jesus, the troublemaker from earlier, and what his true mission is all about. Now Saul finds himself at a crossroads of belief. What he's been following is the opposite of this message. His life shifts from law enforcer to lawbreaker. His path changes from hunter to hunted. 
he goes from persecutor to persecuted. Before he gets too deep, he takes off to the Arabian desert to be trained in a supernatural way by this man Jesus and his Holy Spirit. After he returns to Jerusalem, he meets one of Jesus' best friends by the name of Peter and also gets to know Jesus' brother, James. Everyone that came into contact with Saul or heard his teaching was shocked at the change he made, going from completely anti-Jesus to sharing the message every chance he got. It took 14 more years and another trip to Jerusalem for Saul to be affirmed by the other leaders of this group called the Way. Paul, as his name was changed to, and a man named Barnabas are then commissioned by the leaders to go and continue planting churches and teaching about Jesus. Paul has an earth-shattering experience, quite literally, and changes everything about his life and how he follows God. Can you imagine that? Have you ever thought you were going the right way and it ended up being wrong? Paul's faith was taking him somewhere, but he realized it was not where he should have been going. He was going the wrong way on a one-way street. Everyone has faith. But is it leading you the right way? Coming face to face with this Jesus changes everything. That is the crux of it. His faith led him to change direction and start following the very man he was persecuting. Listen to what Paul says in one of his letters to the region of Galatia. I've been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. He totally got it. He went to the cross with Jesus and died to self, and that is the crux of it. So where is your faith leading you? Paul's faith took him somewhere, and it was more than just words. What about you? Is your faith more than words or just belief? We have to get beyond just talk and get to real faith. Is your faith leading you somewhere? For Paul, he lived by faith in the Son of God. Are you living your whole life committed to the man who bled out on the cross? Is faith just something you believe in or where you go to church? Is your faith just about believing that God is going to give you the things you ask for? like some cosmic Santa Claus. Instead, faith was Paul's way of life, and he considered his old life dead, crucified, just like the Son of God, and any decision he made was put to that test. Faith has to lead us somewhere. What about for you? For some of you, it could be giving into Jesus' love for the first time and getting baptized. Maybe like Paul, you don't understand what Jesus came for. We want to talk to you about your next step. Maybe for some of us, it has to do with not making that full commitment of faith. We don't live lives that say we're dying to follow Jesus every day. For Paul, he was shipwrecked and beaten, whipped and imprisoned, and eventually gave his life to follow Jesus. What is it going to look like for you to die to yourself and live your life in light of Jesus every single day?